Well, here we are. Who, who is happy with the situation in America today? Huh? I mean, let's talk about it. You know, when I go out on the campaign trail and, and, and when I'm doing forums uh, with the other candidates, they look at me like I'm crazy when I talk about what's happening in this country, because I start at the top. Look what's going on at the top of our country right now. We are almost bankrupt and we're piling debt onto our children's future like it's no tomorrow. We've got double digit unemployment. We've got a president who's trying to take over one sixth of our economy. And this is the problem at every level. He had his first real State of the Union address last month after some significant political defeats and right on the heels of Scott Brown being elected a Republican senator in the state of Massachusetts. Now, I'm from Massachusetts, and I'll tell you, that is an anomaly, right? And so what did he do? Our president get up there, and this is what he said, essentially. I have heard you, but I'm going to go ahead with health care anyway. That's the problem with government right now. And it's not just at the national level. Look what's happening here in this great state of California. I mean, it's unbelievable. We are literally going bankrupt. Our governor has come out and said we can't pay our bills. We've got a completely dysfunctional legislature. And worse than that, our elected officials don't understand their role and aren't protecting the citizens of this great state. And the best example of that is the issue with the water up in the Central Valley. Yeah. I'm uh -huh. sure most of you folks have heard about that. But basically what happened is the federal government came in and they said we were going to protect this minnow and shut off this agricultural water that your this farming community that relies upon this for their livelihood and they just shut the water off. And in the worst economic environment in our lifetimes, they shot unemployment to over 40% and literally crippled that community. Now what is the role of our elected officials? Because the governor got on TV and said, well, I'm against it, and he didn't do anything. And the sheriff up there didn't do anything. And that's the problem. Until and unless we start electing officials who understand what their role is and will take a stand, we're going to continue to see this erosion of our rights. The governor could have stepped up and put the National Guard on the turnoff and said, no, you're not going to do it. We'll work with you. We'll try to find another solution. But we're not going to cripple our economy in this environment. Uh, for this cause. The sheriff could have done the same thing, and if I were sheriff up there, that's exactly what I would have done. So let's take it down to our level, Orange County, California. One of the, I mean, look at this place, right? This is one of the wealthiest communities and the wealthiest nations in the world. And, we're, and our government's going through layoffs are so poorly mismanaged. We've had a national embarrassment with our sheriff, who was investigated, indicted, and convicted. This is our top cop. And our establishment stood behind this guy until they took him out of headquarters in handcuffs. That's what happened. We recently had another assemblyman who was uh, sent out of Sacramento on a, on a sexual scandal. And what do we read in the paper after that? It's the best kept, it was the worst kept secret in Sacramento. What does that tell you? That tells you that the folks in the establishment knew about this stuff and they just didn't do anything about it until it broke publicly. Then, of course, they all run away from him and he's out of there in you know, two or three days. That's unacceptable, absolutely unacceptable. I'm going to read you a quote here from Abraham Lincoln because I think it's poignant and I don't want to screw it up. You can fool some of the people all of the time and all of the people some of the time but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. This is the greatest thing about this country that we live in. We determine who governs us. We have the, the authority at the end of the day. But when we pull away, stop paying attention, get involved in other things, look what happens. And we're seeing it. Look what's going on with the scandals with the Democrats right now at the national level. We just went through that with the Republicans. Well, it's happening in the state, it's happening local. We need to start electing public officials at every level who represent our values, who will stand up and do what's right for us, who understand the authority of that office and will exercise it on our behalf when it's called for. 
We need to elect people who understand that they take an oath of office. Every elected official in this country, every soldier, every peace officer swears an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of California. But we're not holding our elected officials accountable to that. So as Tim mentioned, in the aftermath of the uh, corona problems, our Board of Supervisors, in a backroom deal, appointed an unvetted candidate to the most politically charged office in the county. They ignored the, the will of the people. They were getting literally inundated with emails and phone calls and people like Karen, Karen Fenn, who were standing up in front of the Board of Supervisors every other Tuesday telling them who they should put in office. And they ignored it because they're afraid of accountability. They don't want the gravy train to end. That's what it comes down to. But we have to end it sooner or later, or we're never going to get out of the problems we're in.